Hello and welcome to another segment of interviews that matter. I am your host Raj Mehta. Friends, in this segment we bring those guests who influence our lives. This includes elected officials, policy makers, heads of major organizations and other dignitaries. It is my sincere hope that the knowledge brought in by this guest will help our community. Today we have such guest. She is the supervisor of the town of Hempstead, which is the largest township in the United States. Her name is Kate Murray. Kate is also running this year as a district attorney for the Nassau County. Let's meet Kate. Thank you so much for coming, ma'am. Good morning. 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 Good morning running for the DA for the Nassau County and I'm sure I'm sure that you'll do very well. Thank you very much. I appreciate that, Raj. And thank you for inviting me to your show. Yeah. This is a great show. You you, you bring out uh, wonderful information from all, all of your uh, interviews. So uh, good job. Good job. Thank you so much. And you know, I really, to be honest with you, I really wanted you a lot earlier than this, but finally we got that. There we go. So I'm, I'm really happy about that. Me too. That makes two of us. <laughs> Right, yeah. So normally, you know, we, uh, uh, I know that you are the town supervisor since 2003 for the yes. town of Hempstead, largest yes. township in the country. Yes. And uh, it's, uh, it's sort of like 760,000 people. Yes, exactly, right. exactly. Larger yeah. than uh, a number of states, right. Washington, D.C., a number of uh, great American cities. So it is a, uh, it's a big, it's a diverse, wonderful, wonderful township. It's been a great uh, 12 and a half years uh, as supervisor. I've really loved every minute of it. Great, great. Yeah. So we'll go from your background that, you know, sure. I mean, uh, I know you're an attorney, right? You know, yes, yes, I'm an attorney. attorney and uh, before I uh, got the opportunity to really live out my dream of doing public service, uh, I was an assistant attorney general in uh, Manhattan. Loved that job. It was great uh, defending the state and uh, mm -hmm. then I got the opportunity to run uh, for uh, assemblywoman. And I was elected in February of 98 mm -hmm. in a special election, and I was the first woman in that assembly district ever to be elected there. Uh, served very proudly up in Albany on the, uh, the criminal uh, legislation, the codes committee. Mm -hmm. uh, so had a lot of interaction on criminal legislation, which of course uh, brings us to our district attorney run uh, this year. But mm -hmm. uh, that was a great uh, four sessions. And then I had the opportunity to run for Hempstead Town Clerk. Mm -hmm. uh, I was uh, elected uh, ten town clerk in uh, 2001, mm -hmm. and I was the first woman in about 360 years, first uh, woman ever to be Hempstead town clerk. And then a short year later, opportunity knocked again, and so in January of 2003, uh, I was uh, uh, made the supervisor of the town of Hempstead, uh, and uh, with that uh, appointment, I became the first woman ever. Uh, to uh, run the uh, town of Hempstead, and it's been a great 12 and a half years. Very, very successful, I believe. I think we've been able to accomplish a good number of things for our uh, mm -hmm. residents from the service point of view, mm -hmm. but of course you always have to be re respectful of our taxpayers' dollars uh, and their pocketbooks. Uh, everybody works very, very hard to earn their money, mm -hmm. and so we have, I think, struck a very, very good balance between mm -hmm fiscal integrity and, and frugality, but at the same time providing the services that our residents need and deserve. So, you know, that's that's always the eternal balance that you have to strike uh, as a CEO. And I think we've done a pretty good job of that. Well, I can I can say that because, you know, you've been uh, there for a long time, number one, even yes. though there's a democratic move on, you know, at the county level as also the next town, the town of North Hampstead, but right. still there. Yes. So that tells me, you know, yeah. about that also. Yes, yeah. yes, we've been very successful, and I right. think I think the bottom line is today, so many people, instead of identifying with a particular right. political party, they look at the the individual, yeah. I, and yes. uh, and I see you you agree, and yeah. I think people mm -hmm. really judge people uh, not necessarily on their polit you know, their political persuasion but what they're doing uh, right. in office and are they are they a good public servant are they doing the right thing by the people that they serve yep. and i think that's what sways people a lot these days so uh, you know so so far so good no i i agree with you i mean you know it's people look at uh, what is your record and what are you doing for them mm -hmm. that's a key Yes, exactly. I think that's the bottom line for most people, and and I think that's a I think that's a good decision making basis and formula for people to to have as they they choose their their public officials. 
because the bottom line is mm -hmm. we are working for the residents of the town of Hempstead for Nassau County and so we should be judged by the records that we've amassed and mm -hmm. the records that we have uh, created mm -hmm. that's that's the bottom line you know we do that in private business you're in a great great uh, business emphasis it's wonderful one of the best uh, fastest uh, growing uh, companies right here in Nassau County. We're delighted to have you here. And the bottom line is, you know, you're judged by your product, exactly. right? In the private sector. Well, I kind of think of that uh, uh, similarly in the town of Hempstead in government. You know, we, we put out a product, and that's called yeah. government services, and at what, at what cost. And I think that's the product that people have to uh, judge us by. So, and as I say, so far so good. We've been pretty successful. Very good analogy, you know, really, really good analogy. And it's running like a business, you know. Yes. You give yeah. out products, it has a value, people yes. buy it. Exactly, exactly. And so I think there are lots of uh, similarities between uh, the private sector and what, what yeah. government does and right. what it delivers right. uh, to its constituents and citizens. Mm -hmm. yeah. So, you know, I read about you and I think, you know, you've been um, mentored by Chairman Mandelo. Mm -hmm. So he was the really person who mentored you? Uh, yes, well, we happened to be neighbors uh, oh. uh, back uh, before I was an elected official. And mm -hmm. um, so I got to know him and, mm -hmm. you know, and I was involved in lots of grassroots organizations in Levittown, my home community. Right. And right. Uh, so, you know, I, I came to the notice of, uh, of uh, uh, Chairman Joe Mondello mm -hmm. from the Republican Party. And and I think it was uh, really my role models, uh, besides uh, Chairman Mondello, of course, were my parents, first oh. and foremost. Uh, they were very, very active in so mm -hmm. many community mm -hmm. uh, mm -hmm. uh, organizations in Levittown, and they really taught all of uh, my siblings and myself. I'm one of seven, oh, uh, wow. and uh, they really taught us that to be a good citizen, you have to be involved in your community. You have to be making a difference. Right. And so they they were my early, early role models. And uh, mm -hmm. so I think uh, through my activities, I came to the attention of the Republican Party, and as I say, the rest is history, as they say. <laughs> So you are uh, one of the seven. Six yes, I'm number five. six out of seven. Number yeah. six. We yes. also are seven. There's oh. a similarity. And I'm the I'm the seventh last. Month. Oh, you are the baby <laughs> of the family. Right. The baby of the family. So were you the favorite of your parents or or the coddled one? We were one? divided actually. <laughs> <laughs> well, there you uh, go. Yeah. There you go. <laughs> well, I think parents love their children yeah, equally, yeah, and uh, yeah, exactly. but uh, we always you always can joke about the baby of the family, right? Right. right. Yeah. So let me ask you this, that when, yes. you, when you first uh, became a supervisor and, you know, what was the status of your mind and what did you think about it, you know, I mean, how did you... Uh, right. Well, yeah, I, approached, what did you I approached a job, uh, and obviously the being the supervisor of America's largest township, it was just a bigger, a bigger stage, but it was kind of the same principles right. uh, that I uh, used as an assemblywoman, as town clerk, mm -hmm. and the bottom line was, how do we provide the best services mm -hmm. to our constituents mm -hmm. while being very respectful of their pocketbooks? That right. really is the guiding mm -hmm. uh, line, the, the guiding formula for me. Mm -hmm. uh, I think we've, we've uh, you know, really st striven to uh, keep that in mind with all of my decision making as CEO uh, and mm -hmm. as a chief executive. And so uh, we have been able to a reduce or freeze taxes in the last three years mm -hmm. uh, with our budgets and that's on the backdrop of course of a very difficult economy you mm -hmm. know the economy is getting better but right. it has been very very it has difficult been a challenge right yes exactly you know that uh, yep. in the private sector obviously mm -hmm. very mm -hmm. well and it's the same kinds of challenges uh, in government as well and so mm -hmm. uh, while everything goes up you know that all of your uh, consti constituents, all of the citizenry in the town of Hempstead, their bills are going up as well. So you have to always be cognizant mm -hmm. uh, of the strains, the economic strains that are that are on our uh, citizenry already, mm -hmm. and we have to use that and never forget it mm -hmm. as the backdrop mm -hmm. for mm -hmm. our delivery of services. Mm -hmm. At the same time, mm -hmm. of course, mm -hmm. uh, you always want to be expanding your services, improving them, mm -hmm. uh, r reaching more people with those services. And so that's that's the the challenge, the tug and pull, uh, each and every day. But uh, I think we have been able to do a really good job in delivering the services. We've never cut any services, mm -hmm. even at the height mm -hmm. of the uh, bad economy. And that I'm very proud of because we have had this backdrop of tax uh, freezes or tax cuts. Right. And so to achieve that balance is is. Uh, you know, it's a difficult thing. It's not so hard and not so uh, 
easy to do to accomplish, but you know that's that's the the mm -hmm. challenge you mm -hmm. face every day as CEO. All right. How did you do that? I mean, how did you manage well, you know, to reduce the tax? I mean, right. Well, I what we were able to do uh, is a, a number of things, but of course, labor costs are always mm -hmm. uh, the largest part of uh, a budget mm -hmm. uh, of mm -hmm. anybody's budget, right. uh, private right. sector or public. Mm -hmm. And so, what we were, we have done is uh, we've right-sized uh, the workforce. We've never laid off a s one person. No. It's never been that, but mm -hmm. we will give incentives. Uh, to the older workers to retire, uh, mm -hmm. do those kinds mm -hmm. of things. I've done mm -hmm. that a, a few times mm -hmm. over mm -hmm. my uh, nearly 13 years. Mm -hmm. And that, mm -hmm. and of course, keeping a very hawkish eye mm -hmm. on uh, the, the spending mm -hmm. by all of the various departments. You right. know, everybody wants to uh, get whatever they can get and to buy uh, new equipment and everything, and that's always important. But right. you know, the bottom line is, if you know your CEO is looking over your shoulder right. as a commissioner, right. uh, really, really going through the numbers, really sweating the details, so to speak, right. um, everybody just stays, uh, they stay the, the course, and uh, they act as frugally as they can within their departments. So those kinds of things, right-sizing the workforce, really keeping a very, very close eye on the bottom line, as mm -hmm. you do, mm -hmm. Um, mm -hmm. you know, those kinds of things add up to uh, mm -hmm. very good fiscal uh, frugality for mm -hmm. our mm -hmm. residents. And it's through those kinds of uh, savings, those kinds of uh, reviews and, uh, and investigations of our budget on a very mm -hmm. recurring basis, not just once a year, this is mm -hmm. a constant thing. Mm. We are able to make sure that we could uh, keep our spending in line, uh, keep a very disciplined focus amongst our departments, but at the same time, y if you, you, know, you cut out the waste, you could still provide the services, and that's what we strive to do every day. Cut out the waste and provide services. Yes, that's, that's exactly. That's the bottom line, right? Yes, exactly, and you know, so our commissioners, mm -hmm. after 12 and a half years, they know. Right. They know that there is, uh, and the great, the the great people, really good professionals. Right. I'm very happy with them, right. but they know that there's always someone looking over their shoulder, and that's the, that's mm -hmm. the job mm -hmm. of the CEO mm -hmm. to be mm -hmm. the visionary, to be the captain of the right. ship, right. and to mm -hmm. you know mm -hmm. set a tone mm -hmm. amongst mm -hmm. your uh, uh, amongst mm -hmm. your supervisors underneath you right. and your commissioners, mm -hmm. and everybody gets that tone right from the top, and that's the that's the CEO's uh, role. Mm -hmm. I, I take it seriously. Leadership. That's the important thing, there right? You Obviously, go. you know. The Absolutely. The Absolutely. right message to your people and that works. Yes, exactly. Exactly. You know, the, mm -hmm. the CEO always has to set the tone. Right. And so, mm -hmm. uh, but, mm -hmm. you know, by mm -hmm. setting the tone, we still have been able to absolutely advance some great, great services for mm -hmm. our residents mm -hmm. uh, to keep our, protect our children, to uh, assist our uh, senior citizens, uh, to provide affordable housing mm -hmm. for uh, some first-time mm -hmm. home buyers. So we have a very good range of services, mm -hmm. uh, mm -hmm. uh, you know, that uh, complement our fiscal frugality. So, mm -hmm. you know, that's the combination that you, mm -hmm. you always are mm -hmm. trying to achieve. So let's talk about a few of the, you know, like your pet projects yes. or successes yes. that you think was really like you made you feel really great. Right, right. Well, I have to tell you, there's, uh, I have a passion about, uh, about green energy, clean energy. Okay. And so when I mm -hmm. uh, began mm -hmm. as supervisor in 2003, mm -hmm. we started with a hydrogen fueling station. First mm -hmm. one on Long Island, mm -hmm. very cutting edge. Mm -hmm. And we've worked very closely with a number, with the Department of Energy on the mm -hmm. federal level. Mm -hmm. They've actually given us grants mm -hmm. because of our progressive cutting edge mm -hmm. uh, uh, dedication to alternative energies. Mm -hmm. okay. And so we've now created this whole green energy park mm -hmm. down near our beaches on Lido Boulevard in Point Lookout. Mm -hmm. And uh, so now kids come, schools, groups, mm -hmm. they come to learn about solar energy, wind power, mm. um, the hydrogen fueling station. Mm -hmm. And so it really has turned into a very sophisticated progressive uh, alternative energy park, but it's not just an example. We actually incorporate alternative energies into our daily operations, and we've saved the taxpayers money. Okay. My entire office is solar powered. Wow. Uh, and we have many, many solar installations along our facility buildings, mm -hmm, and mm -hmm. they really have resulted in some cost savings. Mm -hmm. Another thing that I'm uh, very passionate about, of course, mm -hmm. is providing uh, uh, services to our senior citizens. We have right. a significant population and we reach about 190,000 mm. senior citizens each year. Wow. Uh, whether it's through our social programs, our nutrition programs, mm -hmm. uh, our cultural programs, mm -hmm. socialization programs, mm -hmm. health 
uh, programs as well. Mm -hmm. We have a great wellness, mm -hmm. health and wellness fair every year. It's the largest on Long Island, mm -hmm. uh, and it attracts thousands of senior citizens, and really every hospital in Nassau County participates, mm -hmm. along with dozens and dozens of private practitioners mm -hmm. who provide all sorts of free screenings, uh, mm -hmm. services mm -hmm. to our seniors. So the seniors I'm very, very dedicated to. They are a group that uh, mm -hmm. I feel very close to uh, in my heart. Mm -hmm. And mm -hmm. uh, and I think that's a, uh, I think I'm attracted to and sort of feel uh, closest to our more vulnerable populations. Mm -hmm. And I think those are our are, are areas, uh, uh, groups of people who need just a little extra hand. And mm -hmm. I so I think of our senior citizens. I think of our children with special needs. Right. We have uh, Camp Anchor in wow. the town of Hempstead, the only municipality on Long Island to provide a, a day camp free mm. for our town of Hempstead residents who have mm. uh, special needs children. It's mm -hmm. right on the beach. Mm -hmm. And I'm proud to say that uh, mm. actually now two years ago, we opened mm. a brand new $6 million mm. uh, building. It's mm. the Camp Anchor Home. Mm. So all of their activities during the, the winter time mm -hmm. can be uh, under one roof. They used to be dispersed throughout the town of Hempstead mm -hmm. at different mm -hmm. school districts. Mm -hmm. Now they have a permanent home in addition to the beautiful uh, summer camp uh, wow. that we provide. Wow. And again, free transportation, door-to-door -door service, door -to -door service, and free, uh, no tuition whatsoever for the summer camp. It's nothing like it on Long Island or dare I say the state of New York. And uh, uh, so that's a very, very special program for me too. Again, uh, sort of protecting and trying to help uh, the most vulnerable in our population. Mm -hmm. I'm, I'm sort of drawn to those groups, uh, and uh, and I think we've done a, a really lovely job uh, in those two particular areas. They're kind of passions for me. Wow, so. nice, nice. But you know, that's really good actually. You know, because yeah. people who need help, that's how you yes. help more. You yes, know, really. exactly. And there is a real, real role mm. for government to protect its citizens. Right, right. I take right. that very, very seriously, yep. and so. Uh, I've mm -hmm. worked with Nazreen mm -hmm. Ahmed, of course, our first South Asian right, uh, right. elected official in town of Hempstead history. Yep. She is our town clerk, doing a great job. Mm -hmm. And we have a child ID program mm -hmm. mi administered through Nazreen's mm -hmm. office. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. Uh, we also have a senior citizen ID program as right. well. You know, sometimes seniors give up their drivers, their driving right. privileges. They, right. they don't want to drive anymore. Mm -hmm. uh, so we provide mm -hmm. a, uh, mm -hmm. an ID but it goes beyond name, rank, and serial number, so to speak. Right. Uh, the senior can put in emergency information, the name of his or her doctor, who to contact if they can't speak for themselves. And so it's a wonderful identification card, of course, free mm. uh, for mm. our seniors. Mm. And it's just another piece of identification that can help them, again, at a, a uh, their most vulnerable point, perhaps when they can't speak for themselves. And so, uh, mm. you know, mm. we've instituted and, and started these different programs right. uh, over the last several years, and uh, literally thousands and thousands of our mm -hmm. seniors mm -hmm. and our children have been uh, mm -hmm. uh, identified and, and, and gone through our, our uh, mm -hmm. child ID uh, profile. What we do is we, mm -hmm. we get the child's fingerprints, mm -hmm. uh, the parent cuts a lock of their hair, mm -hmm. uh, different identification things. So God forbid there's a scenario where right. the police uh, need to have some identifying right. things. Obviously we want to create these reports and never have them used. Right. That's right. the bottom line. Right. Right. But right. it's another way for parents to uh, just have a sense of security about their children mm. uh, and mm. have information, vital information mm. at the mm. at the ready mm. in one form. And so mm. uh, we have fingerprinted and, and done thousands of children um, uh, given those reports. And so, you know, mm. those kinds of programs, again, in the idea of trying mm. to protect our citizenry. Wow, nice. Yeah. We'll take a short break and we'll be right back. Please stay with us. Welcome back to Interviews That Matter. I'm your host, Raj Mehta. We are having a wonderful conversation with Na uh, Town of Hempstead Supervisor, Kate Murray. 
Welcome back, ma'am. Thank you. Thank you. Um, when you do all this work, obviously, you know, there is a lot of cooperation between different organizations, yes. intermunicipal, and as well as, you know, hospitals that you mentioned, right? Yes. Um, it's, a, it's, a, it's a major job. Yes. So what is your mantra for how do you, how do, you do this? Well, you know, you were talking about cooperation amongst uh, right. the hospitals for our senior citizens. Right. And also, we do that uh, amongst other governments mm -hmm. uh, to mm -hmm. have not only, uh, again, to have uh, more efficient and less costly mm -hmm. services mm -hmm. if we can mm -hmm. share services, uh, which, mm -hmm. of course, help our uh, taxpayers. Mm -hmm. But also, sometimes, as such a large municipality, mm -hmm. we're able to many times help mm -hmm. the villages mm -hmm. within the uh, town of Hempstead. Right. They may not have the resources or the assets right. that right. we have right. in the town of Hempstead, and we're always looking to help mm -hmm. uh, our villages. Mm -hmm. For example, uh, recently, uh, mm -hmm. we entered into an agreement with uh, uh, Mayor Bob Kennedy from the village of Freeport, right. great, great village, right. Right. and uh, in exchange for additional mm -hmm. fire matic services, fire protection mm -hmm. services for mm -hmm. a new condominium that mm -hmm. has been just recently built in Freeport, mm -hmm. um, the village of Freeport will provide the, the fire protection services for that condominium, mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. and in return, uh, village of Freeport residents can come to our sanitation facility in Merrick just over the bridge, literally oh, a mile or, right. or so uh, away from Freeport, mm -hmm. and they can get rid of their construction debris, different kinds of household mm -hmm. bulky uh, mm -hmm. items. Mm -hmm. And so, uh, actually, and it was the mayor and myself, we just sat down over a cup of coffee. We were able to uh, hammer out the terms. Uh, I'm on, I, I'd like to think I'm on great relations, you know, great mm -hmm. uh, grounds with uh, so many of our village mm -hmm. uh, mm -hmm. mayors, and it's so important. Mm -hmm to establish uh, relationships of a cooperation, of right. trust. Right. And uh, I have to say Mayor Kennedy was great uh, mm -hmm. in his negotiations, always protecting uh, his constituents. And, uh, and uh, we were able mm -hmm. to hammer out a deal mm -hmm. that was just really great for both sides. Mm -hmm. uh, as I say, the, the new condo uh, owners mm -hmm. in Freeport, mm -hmm. they'll, they'll feel very safe and comfortable mm -hmm. in their brand new homes that they will have fire protection. Right. And of course, village uh, of Freeport residents can bring their bulky items uh, to mm -hmm. our sanitation mm -hmm. facility. So that's, you know, that's just one example. Mm -hmm. The village of Island Park, right. which was very devastated, like all of our South Shore right. uh, from yeah, Superstorm Sandy. Sandy. Right. But Island Park really was devastated to the, mm -hmm. to the extent that even their their village mm -hmm. hall, mm -hmm. where the, their mm -hmm. seat of government was ruined mm -hmm. uh, mm -hmm. by the flooding. And so I had an opportunity to get into a big old payloader mm -hmm. uh, <laughs> just a couple months ago and mm -hmm. uh, actually uh, help knock down uh, Village Hall. They got a grant through uh, FEMA uh, mm -hmm. to rebuild oh, wow. uh, their Village mm -hmm. Hall. But with an agreement with the town of Hempstead, we provided the demolition services. Mm. Obviously, I let the experts really do the hard work in, right. in uh, knocking down Village Hall, but I did get mm -hmm. a chance to knock down a, a couple things. Mm -hmm. um, but by doing that, mm. uh, we entered into an agreement with Island Park. Right. We knocked down and did all the demolition services, mm -hmm. which uh, saved them about $25,000. Mm -hmm. And in return, mm -hmm. we have the right God forbid we have another storm right. to stage our assets, stage our trucks or right, uh, vehicles right, right, right. in an island right. park parking lot. Wow. That'll mm. help us a right, lot right. because we won't have to move our assets right. in the scenario where we have a big mm -hmm. storm that mm -hmm. hits us mm -hmm. and we need to help our residents mm -hmm. uh, in island mm -hmm. park on an ongoing basis for a period of time right. as we did Right. After Superstorm Sandy. Mm -hmm. So it was a great, uh, mm -hmm. that was a great negotiation. It really is great mm -hmm. benefits for the town of Hempstead. Mm -hmm. We can stage our assets. We can keep them and store them after a storm mm -hmm. right in the village of uh, Violin mm -hmm. Park. Mm -hmm. And they, of course, got uh, the demolition of their uh, village hall for right. free. They got uh, saving. Yes, exactly. Saving mm -hmm. uh, all of our mutual mm -hmm. constituents, really. Right, right. And so uh, that was a, just another quick example of how mm -hmm. I try to, try to work, try mm -hmm. to uh, mm -hmm. get into as many agreements as we can with mm -hmm. our villages. As I mm -hmm. say, many times we can provide assets, mm -hmm. uh, uh, different kinds of vehicles that the villages just don't have. Right. Uh, they right. don't yeah. own. Right. And uh, so with mm -hmm. that, mm -hmm. but then they could give us something in return. Mm -hmm. And so mm -hmm. it's a very cooperative relationship that I have with uh, all of our villages. And, mm -hmm. uh, you know, bottom line is you get economies of scale. Right. Uh, you get right. some cost savings. After right. all, it's all our... Mm -hmm. 
uh, co you know, mutual uh, constituents and taxpayers. Right. So this right. way, it's a win-win situation all around. So, you know, you try to do that. That mm -hmm. helps. Mm -hmm. And uh, you know, I just think uh, keeping uh, lines mm -hmm. of communication open as much as uh, as much as you can, not only with your own commissioners, right. your own town government, right. but also uh, all of the village governments that are located within the town as well. Mm -hmm. I think that. Uh, that really uh, instills a, a feeling of cooperation, good mm -hmm. communication mm -hmm. amongst the different governments. And, mm -hmm. you know, when you're cooperating, when you're talking, as you well know, yep. uh, you get more things done. I the, agree. the honey versus vinegar thing, I'm definitely about the honey. Uh, keeping good, good lines of communication open with everybody that I deal with. And, mm -hmm. uh, mm -hmm. you know, I think at the end of the day, that yields better results. You know, with that note, I want to say that, you know, we, Infosys, our company, yes. had uh, uh, implemented the first shared government services portal in the country. Fabulous. At Great Neck, where we connected nine villages, school district, fire, police, parks, everybody perfect. on one platform. That's you perfect. Know, so that also, you know, that, that kind of platform, mm -hmm. it really can help also in, in terms of increasing the communication, sharing the resources, yes. cooperative purchasing. Mm -hmm. So I just yes, want to exactly. mention to you that that's you know, perfect. Yeah, exactly, yeah. and that's uh, that in a very, very right. elegant nutshell. Right. Uh, right. Really sums up what right. what I try to do on the mm -hmm. government level. Mm -hmm. You did that mm -hmm. with. Uh, technology. Yes, with yeah. the technology, it's great, right. but ultimately helping so many uh, levels absolutely. of government. Yes. So yeah, that's what yeah. we try to do uh, mm -hmm. on a mm -hmm. daily basis, and mm -hmm. you know, a lot of mm -hmm. times you really end up with some mm -hmm. very, very good results. So let me let me go over quickly a little bit here in the Nassau Coliseum project, right? Yes. That's kind of a flagship project, yes. really going to change Long Island's uh, yes, face. Yes, it's very exciting. Uh, uh, it's a 91-acre parcel. Right. Uh, we, uh, Bruce Ratner and Forest City uh, right. Properties, they they mm -hmm. are the developer. They were picked by Nassau County. Uh, they've done a great mm -hmm. job, and mm -hmm. basically, we're just about done with the uh, the application process. Right. And uh, Mr. Ratner has said publicly he hopes that the day after the final Billy Joel concert, uh, which is on August 4th, uh, that the day after he wants to break ground for right. a, a whole right. newly renovated uh, Coliseum. So we're very excited about that. Right. All of the paperwork is, is done, is being done. And um, not only will we have a beautiful, uh, practically brand new uh, Coliseum, but also another additional 200,000 or so uh, square feet of development around the Coliseum. Around the and that's Coliseum. just phase one. Right, uh, right, so right. there's gonna be very, very exciting development. There'll be jobs creation. It will be a shot in the arm economically, right. not only for the town of Hempstead, but it really for all of Nassau County because that'll become instantaneously, I, I believe, yep. uh, a, a real mm -hmm. tourist destination. And people from all over, not just Nassau, but from all around the region, they'll come, they'll spend their hard-earned consumer mm -hmm, dollars mm -hmm. right here in Nassau County. That's so it. it's a win-win situation for us all. So I'm super excited about uh, the mm -hmm. redevelopment mm -hmm. of that uh, Coliseum parcel. And uh, I think uh, we're full steam ahead. And I think before the end of the summer, you know, people, the casual observer is going to be seeing that construction is is More starting and uh, that's an exciting prospect for us all I think. I really, I really, I, I'm also excited about yes. it because we yeah. want to compete with New York City. Yes, you know, exactly. We want to you know, bring New York City people here. Right, <laughs> you know. Exa you're exactly <laughs> yeah. right and yeah. I think the Coliseum property mm -hmm. will have a real mm -hmm. nice trickle down effect as well for surrounding right. neighborhoods, mm -hmm. for restaurants, mm -hmm. stores mm -hmm. and so I think that mm -hmm. trickle down economic Right. Uh, positivity mm -hmm. will will be there as well. So I think it's a mm -hmm. real win-win mm -hmm. situation. So let's talk about public safety initiatives that you have made. Yes, well we were, I was uh, touching on them before with, with regard to some child uh, ID, mm -hmm. child okay. safety okay. Uh, procedures and those uh, our senior citizen mm -hmm. uh, ID programs. We, we host a whole number of uh, kinds of uh, learning educational programs for our citizenry mm -hmm. uh, to teach them about different things, uh, computer safety. Okay. for our young mm -hmm. people, mm -hmm. uh, cyber security, mm -hmm. and mm -hmm. uh, issues on keeping our young people, our teenagers, mm -hmm. our, mm -hmm. our uh, younger children safe on the internet. Right. Uh, we go around to schools, we've partnered mm -hmm. with uh, Channel 12 in the past, mm -hmm. uh, and uh, that's been a great program. We try to give the, pro we give the program to parents as mm -hmm. well. Mm -hmm. uh, sometimes uh, our children are technologically way more proficient way more, than, right. <laughs> than all the, you know that well, right? Yeah, right. Absolutely. And so we give programs as well to parents 
right. to let them know exactly what they should be looking mm -hmm. towards mm -hmm. and mm -hmm. looking at uh, with regard to their children's internet activity to keep them safe. Mm -hmm. And so mm -hmm. those kinds of protective measures and, and programs we take very seriously uh, in the town of Hempstead and we, we provide them on an ongoing year-long uh, basis. We work very closely with our school districts mm -hmm. to get the mm -hmm. internet safety programs in mm -hmm. and uh, mm -hmm. so you know it's it's just that ongoing reminder and mm -hmm. safety uh, for our children, for our uh, maybe perhaps more vulnerable senior citizens. Right. And uh, so we just continue that on a uh, on an everyday basis, and we think mm -hmm. that that really mm -hmm. goes a, mm -hmm. uh, a fair way in protecting our citizenry mm -hmm. from, mm -hmm. unfortunately, the increasing threats mm -hmm. that we see around our world. Um, Kate, you know, I know you have a time constraint, and I can really talk to you a lot more. We could talk for hours. Uh, I, I, I've, we, got, I've got so many things <laughs> to ask you, but I know you have a time constraint. <laughs> so I'm going to go right to your, you know, the recent announcement about yes. you running as a Nassau district attorney. Yes, yes. Okay, so let's talk about that. Yes. Uh, what was the thought came into your mind that why yeah. you're running for that? Office? Well, you know, yeah. I think all of my experience uh, right. from day one as right. an assistant attorney general, right. uh, as a state legislator who right. worked on criminal mm. legislation, I was mm. on the committees, mm. uh, mm. and so we we created the laws in Albany, mm -hmm. and then mm -hmm. I got to be town clerk and then Hempstead town supervisor. Mm -hmm. The mm. effects of those laws mm -hmm. that I helped create in Albany, mm -hmm. uh, then I saw the effects of them in our neighborhoods and on our Mm -hmm. uh, mm -hmm. residents mm -hmm. and our citizens. Mm -hmm. So and so, I think w all my executive experience is running the largest town mm -hmm. uh, in America mm -hmm. of 2,000 employees. I have to put together a nearly half a billion dollar budget each year mm -hmm. uh, while providing the services and uh, at the same time respecting our taxpayers. Mm -hmm. And all mm -hmm. of that executive experience, the state lawmaker experience, being an assistant attorney general, I think the, the next step to being district attorney is just a natural one. Mm -hmm. uh, I, I see that mm -hmm. my all of my experience up until mm -hmm. today mm -hmm. really uh, gives me great experience and knowledge and know-how to be n the next district attorney of Nassau County. Bottom line is the district attorney has to be captain of the ship, mm -hmm. has to be the visionary, mm -hmm. has to determine where the resources in that department go and where the uh, the efforts and where the prosecutions are s to be directed. Right. And quite frankly, in Nassau County, we have a uh, a rising problem with heroin usage, uh, with addiction. Right. Uh, we're having more drug dealers being arrested on a daily basis in Nassau County. This is an area that is very, very frightening to me. Mm -hmm. uh, I think mm -hmm. there are not nearly enough resources being devoted mm -hmm. uh, in the district attorney's office to prosecuting uh, drug dealers, mm -hmm. to helping those who are addicted seek mm -hmm. out treatment uh, and uh, counseling and education as well mm -hmm. in our schools. Mm -hmm. That's a three-pronged mm -hmm. approach that we must take mm -hmm. to the heroin problem. Mm -hmm. uh, we've had a 38% increase in heroin deaths uh, from 2011 to 2014. Wow. The increase in uh, drug arrests mm -hmm. uh, in mm -hmm. 2015 they've skyrocketed. Mm. And so the numbers are not going in the right direction, Raj. Mm. Raj and we have to make sure that we need to protect uh, the citizenry mm. of Nassau County. That I think will be an absolute instant priority for me uh, mm. as uh, the district attorney. That's an area that really mm -hmm. is being neglected at this point. Mm -hmm. uh, the police, uh, they're doing a great job doing the arrest, but we need to have more prosecutions, more education, and more help and more assistance for people seeking treatment. Mm -hmm. That's mm -hmm. the that's uh, something I'm going to work on very very seriously uh, mm -hmm. as Nassau mm -hmm. County's district attorney. Mm -hmm. Chris, I was I have been a, a an advocate for victims of domestic violence. Right. Uh, as an yes. attorney, uh, that's an area uh, that we always always have to expend mm -hmm. resources mm -hmm. on to help mm -hmm. those victims. Mm -hmm. And uh, mm -hmm. so those are a couple of my priorities. Uh, for being district attorney. My father was an FBI agent. Oh. I grew up in a law okay. enforcement home. Mm -hmm. uh, we were all mm -hmm. about uh, law for uh, you know, law mm -hmm. and order in mm -hmm. my in my home. So I grew up with that organically mm -hmm. uh, as a child, right into adulthood. Adulthood, mm -hmm. and I think all my experience as a state legislator, as an attorney, assistant attorney general, as CEO of America's largest township. I'd certainly bring the executive experience 
uh, to the district attorney's office, and I have very real ideas about where where we need to go in that office to mm. protect the citizens of Nassau County. Mm. And so I think it's a, a, a very organic, very natural next step uh, to be mm -hmm. district attorney. Uh, the great thing in my life, I've been very blessed. I've loved being supervisor of the town of Hempstead. Right. Uh, but I really, I see the pulse, and I know mm -hmm. the pulse of our citizenry. I know what their needs are, I know what their concerns are, mm -hmm. because mm -hmm. I'm with them every day. Mm -hmm. And mm -hmm. I, that kind of experience, that kind of knowledge, I'm going to bring to the district attorney's office. Mm -hmm. uh, I bring mm -hmm. a very, very wide uh, breadth of experience uh, and relationships to the th to the table, mm -hmm. and I think all of that uh, experience, I from an executive point of view, from a constituent uh, person, a person who is always out there amongst the neighbors, right. I, th I bring that kind of sensibility to the DA's office, mm -hmm. and I think that will really be a very positive uh, thing for that office. And uh, I'm very excited about the race. I've gotten a lot of support uh, from different groups, mm -hmm. and uh, I really think that I can make a difference in the district attorney's office. Well, you know, we, we want to wish you all the best for the race, and I thank know you. that you're going to be successful. Well, thank uh, you so much because of your background and your experience and your, you know, zeal and enthusiasm. Yes, I have really, a lot of that, which is really important for yes. any office, you know. Yes, uh, absolutely. So I definitely uh, appreciate that. We definitely appreciate thank that. Thank you, right? much. Um, I know that, you know, as I mentioned before, that we have a lot of things to talk about. So you yes. promise to come again here? I do. I was just going to ask you, if you, if you invite me, I'll be back again. But then I'd you love have to, to have at more. least an hour. Yes, more than absolutely. That. Absolutely. We'll make that happen. All right. Thank you so much. Yeah. Thank you so much for joining us today. If you have any questions, comments, you can email me at rajmitv at gmail.com. That's again rajmitv at gmail.com. You can watch our prior shows on YouTube at youtube.com slash Infosys International. That's again youtube.com slash Infosys International. Until next time, have a great week.